பஞ்சதந்திர தோல் பை ஸ்ரீராம் ராகவன் சாப்டர் ஒன் இன்ட்ரோடக்ஷன் The Panchatantra is an ancient collection of animal fables told in 300 BCE by Vishnu Sharma. Ancient Indian epics like the Mahabharata and the Ramayana provide ample material for learning the rules of conduct in life. These epics depict life situations and induce morality, but they rely on serious and engaging stories for this purpose. The Panchatantra however does the same through animal tales. Therefore, it proves to be fun-filled and relatable to an age group that is a touch younger. The stories depict a large array of subjects like friends, politics, common sense among others and thus are interesting to children and adults. The Panchatantra is a textbook on Niti Shastra. There is no direct translation of the word niti in English. Roughly translated, it could mean the wise conduct of life or it simply means common sense. In life, we learn the sciences, arts, computers, medicine and so on and so forth. None of these subjects will be useful if our common sense is compromised. Unfortunately, common sense is never taught as a subject in any school because it is considered well common however we are lucky in that we have the panchatantra niti shastra assumes the following principles i need security or i cannot live in danger i need money or i cannot be poor I need to be capable of firm action. I need good friends. And I need to exercise my intelligence. So, security, money, firm action, good friends and intelligence. It is incredible how the single word niti encompasses so much meaning. Let us dive into how the Panchatantra came to be told. The Panchatantra originated during the Kali Yuga. There was once a king called Amara Shakti, king of Mahila Ropya. Though the king was a scholar and a powerful ruler, his three sons, Vasu Shakti, Ugra Shakti and Aneka Shakti were dumb and stupid. The king was worried and thought to himself, my children will grow up one day and they will have to rule this kingdom after i am gone they have no knowledge of the government or politics or even life in general what do i do to educate them alas they are not receptive to any form of education therefore the king convened his ministers and sought their advice his ministers replied o king it takes a minimum of 12 years to learn the sanskrit language alone on top of that your children would need to learn artha shastra kama shastra and manu shastra which would take several more years the king was dejected he had no hope that his sons would ever become scholarly his minister continued O king there is however a scholar called Vishnu Sharma he is well known and regarded by many as the master of niti shastra we could ask him to tutor your children Vishnu Sharma was summoned and after paying due respect he heard the king's woes the king told him about his three stupid sons and his need to educate them He promised Vishnu Sharma a large sum of money in return for his tutorship. Vishnu Sharma rose from his seat and replied, "O oh king, I will take up your task, but I don't want any money. You see, I am 80 years old. I have lost all interest in material possessions. 
I will do this for your welfare alone. Vishnu Sharma continued, Mark today's date. If I do not make your sons experts in Niti Shastra within six months time, your majesty can kick me out and send me on my way. The king was shocked and surprised at this daring statement. But he was glad that he finally found a way to educate his sons. He entrusted them under the tutelage of Vishnu Sharma. Vishnu Sharma began teaching the three sons of the kings his stories called the Panchatantra, which consisted of five tantras or volumes. The first is called Mitra Bheda, which means loss of friends. This tantra gives an understanding of how good friends can be lost owing to opponents or enemies, which effectively makes the enemy stronger. The second is called Mitra Samprapti, which means winning of friends. This tantra explains how friends can be made and won back if lost. It also explains how friendship can be cultivated for a mutually beneficial cause. The third is called Kakolukiyam, which means of crows and owls. This tantra describes how a misunderstanding between enemies can be created to forge deceit and weaken them. It explains this by showing the enmity between crows and owls and how one suppresses the other. The fourth is called Labdha Pranasham, which means loss of gains. This tantra explains how we can lose what we had previously gained if we do not exercise proper caution. The fifth and final is called Aparikshita Karakam, which means rash deeds. This tantra describes the ill effects of taking rash action without deliberating on the consequences. The Panchatantra is timeless as is common sense. It is for the young and the old. It is for the newly wed or the father of many. It is for the student and the teacher. It is for the daughter. It is for the mother. It is for the grandfather. It is for the child. There is a message in it for everyone. And it is told in the form of exciting, fun-filled animal fables. I dedicate the telling of the Panchatantra series to my many teachers, starting with my mother, my family, my friends, and my mentors and loved ones. I hope that you enjoy this series as much as I enjoy telling it to you.